Hey, it's me. So in our last show, we looked at how long before a physical world existed, some created beings who had free will and certain powers started misusing those powers. And that led to what's often called the fall of the angels or the fall. It was a slow process where everything divine gradually turned into its opposite. And because of this, a separation happened between those who abused their power and those who didn't. Our attitudes, opinions, feelings, and thoughts create the spiritual world. Even while we're here on earth, each of us is shaping the world that will be ours. In the same way, the spirits involved in the fall created new worlds based on their changing attitudes. Dark worlds that we often call hell. Their feelings of disharmony and hatred formed those places. Now, there isn't just one way this happens. For example, imagine a being who, in their perfect state, had a powerful love, the fire of divine love. If that love flipped into its opposite, it would become a fire of hatred and wickedness, creating a chaotic, fiery world. Who knows, maybe legends are more real than they seem. Now, think of another being who originally had wise judgment, calmness, and thoughtful reflection. These qualities would help them contribute to divine creation in a special way. But if these turned into their opposites, they'd create a world maybe of icy coldness, darkness, and emptiness. So there are many ways divine attributes can reverse and form different realms in the world of darkness, just as there's endless variety in the divine world. Fiery and icy are just two examples. There are also places filled with slime and dirt or areas of intense suffering due to overcrowding or isolation, many, many other kinds. One of the most important divine aspects is free will, the freedom to choose. We've been talking a lot about free will. This too, in turn, can be turned into its opposite. The spirit who gave into the temptation of misusing power. Sometimes the spirit is called Lucifer, the Satan. Or a devil. He influenced others to follow him. Naturally, he was the first to inhabit the new world that came into being. The spirit had complete control over those who followed him, and unlike God, he used this power to dominate. God gives us the power and freedom to choose, and that's more significant than we even realize. With that freedom comes the possibility to misuse power and go against divine laws. But if we didn't have a choice, there'd be no freedom or power. Without free choice, without free will, we can't be true divine happiness or divinity at all. Now in contrast, the opposite of God in his laws involves taking away free choice and having the stronger dominate the weaker. This situation might make it seem impossible for the fallen beings to be saved. Even if they wanted to return to God, they couldn't because they were under the control of the one ruling the world of darkness, Lucifer seeing the devil. So how could God save those who longed for him without breaking his own laws? Because if he overruled the free will of those who chose their own path, he'd be acting just like Lucifer, right? So here... It's crucial for God to stick to his divine principles. Only by staying true to himself and his laws would there be a fundamental difference between God's ways and Lucifer's ways. Since God's plan is for every being to recognize him and eventually return by free choice, he couldn't use the same forceful methods as his opponent, even if his intentions were good. It's not just the end result that matters, it's also how you get there. So only by holding firm to these principles could even the most stubborn fallen beings eventually see the vast difference between these two paths and understand the dignity of divine principles, even if it meant a difficult journey for those wanting to escape their self-made misery. In the spiritual world, life is directly connected to inner harmony enlightenment, and our overall attitude. Spirits that have become disharmonious 
can't just be placed into a harmonious world like you travel to a beautiful country, let's say. Like in the spiritual realm, the country in this analogy is both you and what you create. So the fallen spirits had to and still have to reach a state where they naturally create harmonious worlds again. So the fallen spirits had to and still have to reach a state where they naturally create harmonious worlds again. This can only happen through the same slow process of development that led to their fall in the first place. You can see now that this had to happen through free choice. And if that's the case, questions like why hasn't God gotten rid of evil don't make sense within this context. They really don't. Now, at the same time, ways had to be found for the beings who wanted to return to God and follow his laws instead of Lucifer's to do so within God's laws. This meant that no one's free will would be broken, not even Lucifer's. The realms of darkness came into existence where spirits lived under Lucifer's control. At first, there was no longing for or awareness of the light they once had. Only after experiencing their self-chosen state of desolation for a long time did some of these beings start to feel a vague longing for something else, even if they didn't know exactly what that was. As their attitudes began to change, their memories of God and his worlds, which had faded as disharmony set in, started to return. But it was a very slow process. Spiritual darkness wipes out knowledge, which is spiritual light. Just like with us humans, if you lack spiritual enlightenment, you have to work to regain glimpses of that light, like a remembering process. The vague longing that some beings felt brought a tiny bit of light into their world, like a distant dawn changing the landscape just slightly. The cold maybe wasn't as bitter, the fire maybe not as scorching, the filth slightly less filthy, maybe the loneliness not as unbearable or hopeless. When enough spirits reached the state of longing and it grew stronger, the time was right for the material world as we know it to come into existence. You could say that God created the material world and that's true because nothing can be created without the divine creative force. And it's also true that the material world was created by the longing of enough spirits for something higher. The world we live in is a result of the desire to strive upwards, to spiral upwards. Here, conditions allow for spiritual development and the possibility to freely choose God, which isn't possible in the worlds of darkness. In other words, our earth is a product of the longing of the fallen spirits and also of those beings who stayed with God and deeply desire to bring their brothers and sisters back to him. So both the divine worlds and the worlds of darkness help to create our earth. The influence of both exists here and will show itself according to the attitude of each individual who has the power of free choice. Conditions on earth are different because of the new form of matter, but circumstances vary in all realms. Long before the fallen spirits developed enough to be born as men and women, the spiritual life force first created other forms of life. This original life force working in each being produced animals, plants, minerals, and other substances that didn't necessarily have self-awareness. Over time, more and more beings began to feel a longing for light. Very gradually, human beings came into existence in material form through various stages. When this happened, a major step was achieved. This was when the first spark of self-awareness was born or reawakened. More and more people came to live on Earth. Only with self-awareness, which includes thinking and making decisions, can development take place. All the forms of life before humans were leading up to this point. Now we know that humans create their spiritual world. And on earth, where the influence of God's world also existed for the first time since the fall, 
people now have the chance to learn, to change, to turn to God, and to create a better world for themselves, both materially and spiritually. They would go to the spirit world after death, and also during sleep when the body rests. From the spirit world, they would receive inspirations and influences of all kinds. This is why development can proceed faster. The beings who incarnated were initially so undeveloped, so to speak, that they were constantly influenced by their own sphere. If God's world hadn't also acted on earth, there wouldn't have been any difference between earth and a realm in the world of darkness. Again, I think this is a case where words don't suffice. The main thing is for each of us to get to know our own soul and develop it spiritually. Now, how did the influence of God's world show itself? Could God's angels guide and inspire the human beings who were incarnated from the spheres of darkness? That would have been impossible because according to universal law, a human being has to make the first move to receive help from God's world. Okay, how could they do that if they were still so coarse that they had no idea of God, no concept of his world, and no clue about what to do? On the other hand, since God's world co-created this material earth, it had the right, according to the law of free will, to manifest its influence here. So the answer maybe is that pure spirits who remained in the divine worlds were incarnated on earth. There were very few of them at any one time, but the influence of even one, even one such being far outweighed the strength and influence of a hundred beings from the world of darkness. These spirits brought light, love, and wisdom with them when they incarnated. They had a great mission on earth and their impact was much greater than it might have seemed at first. As their influence grew over the ages, the fallen spirits incarnated on earth could freely choose which side to listen to, the side that appealed to their lower nature or the side that encouraged them to rise higher despite any difficulties. By allowing this free choice, God's law was not violated. Communication with the beyond happened as well, not only through guidance and inspiration, but also through more direct forms that we now often call mediumship or channeling. If communication with one world was possible, then connecting with the other within the law was possible as well. If one had been impossible, the other would have had to be impossible as well. So maybe this is where some people can make a mistake by thinking that any communication with the beyond is dangerous and only comes from dark sources. Human development couldn't have progressed at all in those early times if the pure spirits who occasionally incarnated couldn't make a direct connection with God's world to bring truth to humanity. To have this benefit and stay within divine law, there had to be an equality so that each person could make a free choice. Equal influence had to come from both sides. This meant fewer beings from the divine world living on earth because their strength outweighs and lasts longer than the influence of evil. However, especially in the early times, there was a lot of interaction between the material and Luciferic worlds. Dark spirits claimed to be gods and promised humans all sorts of favors if they would follow what these spirits dictated. Despite all this harm and danger, the few communications established with God's world more than made up for it, thankfully. The incarnated pure spirits had enough enlightenment within themselves to spread divine truth and had what was needed to be in communication with God's world as instruments. Without this connection, not enough truth could have been given to humanity. Even though these pure spirits had no evil in them, the physical body took so much energy that teachings coming solely from within themselves wouldn't have been enough. Truth was shared in a way that humanity at each period was ready to absorb. And this went on for a long time. This is ongoing. Gradually, more of the fallen spirits reached a point where they could recognize God. Their longing became conscious and meaningful. They could now develop their will to overcome the negative impulses of their lower state. 
the change that started to happen had a much greater effect than we realize. None of us fully understands that when one person develops and does their best, they not only help themselves, they also add valuable cosmic power to this great reservoir, what's often be called our holographic universe. This will ultimately have a decisive effect, a decisive effect that spreads widely, even if the person themselves doesn't see any effect at all. As people change, they might notice some impact in their immediate surroundings, maybe their friends and family start to change a little because of their own transformation. But generally, we won't know. We won't know as long as we're on Earth how far-reaching the effect of even the smallest effort in this direction actually is. No such effort is ever in vain. It's like throwing a stone into a still pond. Ripples form around it, right? And then more ripples spreading so far that your eyes can't follow them to the edge. But the ripples are still there. If one person overcomes a single weakness, it provides the best help in this great plan of salvation. And I believe that is what's happening right now. Right in this moment here on Earth. Just as when enough spirits reached a state of long longing, and that state of longing grew stronger and stronger, the time was right to create this material world as we now know it to come into existence. Perhaps there is this threshold being reached right now by many of us on Earth who are experiencing a similar longing, a longing for something higher. Perhaps we are in the process of creating a new spiritual world. Let me know what you think. I love you. Let's connect soon.